back to the 1480 Sports Radio Show. Hey, man. Fortune Sports Show is brought to you by Fan Together. Go to fandogether.net and see where the local fans are in your town. All right, uh, so here we are at the Super Bowl taking place on uh, Sunday. Uh, as we all know, we got the Seattle Seahawks coming up against the Denver Broncos. Uh, line on this game right now, Denver minus two in the game. Uh, over under, anybody? Was it 49, I believe? I got nothing. I probably should have that information, no, but, you know, I don't. Uh, I'll find it. I'll get it up at some point. All right, so a lot of a lot of big matchups to go over, and I think obviously, you know, let's start it off with you know the Denver offense against the Seattle defense. Yeah, yeah, strength versus strength, indeed. Uh, I mean, the old cliche, right? Defense wins championships. Uh, you kind of going to see it here, but um, you know, the matchup side of matchup, you know, that Seattle secondary, it's probably the best we've seen in a while. Um, and, Especially, yeah, you know, and, it's a matchup against his, his Broncos. Right, the strength of the Broncos, obviously, in that receiving core. Um, you know, all big guys, you know, aside from Welker, but, you know, big guys. Um, Seattle plays man very well, uh, which is probably what they're going to have to do. Um, am I on? No, you're on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tremendous. Welcome. Hi. Tremendous. <laughs> Hello. Uh, that's, that's probably what they're going to have to do. Um, you know, d d whoever wins individual matchups, right? That's what it's going to come down to. What, what I think is the key you know, the secondary receivers, you have to make Peyton Manning uncomfortable. And yeah. you really don't have to sack him necessarily, right? Just get to him. You have to make get to him. You have spot. to pressure him. Exactly. You have to make him move his feet. Um, you know, you can't give him that first read. And you can't give him all day to throw. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah. Um, that Denver offensive line played very well against New England. But uh, throughout the course of the season, at various points, it's shown susceptibility, right? You, mm -hmm. can, you can rush Peyton. I think yeah. San Diego, I thought, was the best example of that throughout the year. Um, you know, they, they got to Peyton. Um, but the other thing is Peyton showed a willingness in that New England game. If if you give him an empty box, you know, you only put six in a box, he'll, he'll he's going to run the ball. He'll he, run. He's, yeah. You know, he'll feed those backs. So, um, you know, you got to stop the run, and I think Seattle will do that. You know, it's going to come down to Manning, uh, you know, which it pretty much always comes down to the quarterbacks, right? Um, I you gotta you gotta move him. You gotta hit him. You gotta move him. Uh, you gotta make him uncomfortable. If he gets in one of those grooves where he's just you know dinking and dunking and finding every receiver, yeah, you're not gonna you know to put one of those drives together and forget about it. Um, they gotta make him uncomfortable throughout the game. Similar to what like the Giants did against Brady. Yeah, uh, back when it's... they had that prolific offense, that right. Randy Moss offense. That's that was the Giants MVP that game was the defensive line. Yeah. Straight hand, that NASCAR OC. package that they talked about. You know, all the time. The, uh, Seattle has to do a similar similar thing and, and really uh, disrupt Manning's uh, rhythm. And I think uh, you know what Seattle can do here is they could take a page out of. I, I don't feel like I'm on. Uh, they could definitely take a page from the book of the San Diego Chargers because what they did both times against the Broncos this year was play ball control offense. And yeah. you know, and here's the deal: if if you play ball control offense, that's less times that Peyton Manning is on the field. You know, so the more time, the more opportunities that you give Peyton Manning to beat you, he will do it. Uh, you know, and in the three losses that that the Broncos had this year, uh, you know, Indy scored uh, 39 on them. New England scored the 34. Uh, San Diego, they put up 27 on them, but that was much more of a ball control offense. I think you know, San Diego, you know, they. They went one and two against Denver all season, you know, playoffs included. But they always played them very tough. I think the, you know, their uh, worst loss against them was eight points. They always kept the game close, and I think that's what you have to do against this team: just not give Peyton Manning enough opportunities to beat you. Yeah, and I think that Seattle's strength is the fact that they don't have to put extra guys back in the secondary to cover these guys. They can basically press, you know, play a press coverage for the most part. I mean, and never mind they're doing this without Brandon Browner, the, the, their first starting quarterback. Right. Uh, Brandon Maxwell is filled in. Is it Brandon Maxwell, I think? Maxwell, yep. yeah. Uh, he's filling in great. And then I think they can basically play their base set, still get pressure on Manning, and not allow him to run the ball, and and press those receivers at the same time. I mean, the thing is, Denver's offense was historically good. I mean, if you look at it, any kind of ranking, that you know, the touchdowns Absolutely. that – Payton put up there. One of the best of all time. The first team to score 600 points. I mean, they played, I think, the third weakest schedule defense-wise. But even if you adjust it for schedule, they're still up there with, like, the top 10 offenses of all time, or at least within the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously they're good. They're going to move the ball. But I don't see them being able to move it consistently enough against this defense. I think Sherman, uh, what's the, the – I'm forgetting on the, uh, the safeties. Earl, Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. Chancellor. 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 I think those guys are going to control the game, and I think that they're the difference maker in this one. Because I can see them, 
you know, I mean, Demarius Thomas and Decker are both big guys, but I see them almost kind of canceling each other out. Yeah. And then that's just giving the, the defensive line, the linebackers, extra time to get to Peyton. Right. Um, what is probably, <laughs> you know, on that Denver offense, right, the, the offensive line is, is where it's susceptible. And, you know, you have to do a good enough job in the secondary, which, you know, we, we assume they're going to. Um, to at least give those passers a little bit of time to get to Manning. But I think it comes down to those passers have to be effective. You know, you're not going to give Peyton Manning any looks that he's not seen before, right? He's going to figure it out. You're not going to trick him. Yeah. So it comes down, you have to win the one, one-on-one matchups, right? The guy that's single covered, he has to beat that guy to make Manning uncomfortable, to, to move the pocket, you know, uh, to make move uh, Manning move out of the pocket. Um, and, and that's what's important. Um, and the in-game adjustments will be cr- key, too, just to yeah. see kind of how – Seattle reacts to Peyton, how Peyton reacts to Seattle. You know, it's going to be a chess game constantly moving back and forth. I think uh, early on, I, I think Seattle has to get a couple early stops because to flip it around and that ta- that Seattle offense, if they go down by a couple touchdowns or you know seventeen to points, they're not designed to come back. Right. They're not a you know they had some big plays, no doubt, and Russell Wilson will come on, but that's not what they want to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, Wilson, they want to pound Lynch, um, and they want to control the ball. So falling down early is something Seattle like desperately, desperately has to avoid. Because Lynch, Lynch is mad from all these questions he's getting asked. <laughs> he's gonna rumble over people. He's gonna throw skittles at everybody. <laughs> you he, see, they made it his own skittles or special yeah. Seattle skittles for him. He's just about the business, boss. <laughs> just about the work, boss. Yeah, well, no, what do he say? The action. The action. Just about action. the action. Just about the action. Talk ain't doing nothing. Oh he, man. Calling everybody boss. Boss. Uh, you know what's interesting about this too? Peyton Manning has never faced one person on the in the uh, Seattle secondary. Eh, well, that's, I that's mean, a... now, now it's happened in preseason. You know, the two oh, teams yeah, they, they played, played each, each other, other and... but you know, nobody's really Old going at that a- AFC West matchup. And another the interesting Seahawks. stat that I saw throughout the week: Richard Sherman lines up to the offense's right about ninety-eight percent of the time. So you know, this could also it's going to bode well for Denver if they, you know, play a little keep away from Sherman. But, you know, if you're playing keep away from Sherman, then, you know, you still got Chancellor Thomas and uh, Maxwell to deal I, yeah. with. So. I don't think I mean, they're going to throw away from Sherman. I think Peyton I Manning think Peyton throws to the open guy. I mean, yeah. he, he threw 10 touchdowns to five different guys. You know, he, he's going to throw it who's open. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think Peyton's he's going to take whatever you give him. He's if, not he, gonna, if he doesn't right. see it somewhere else, he's going to take it some, wherever it is. You know, he doesn't care if it's Sherman or Chancellor or Thomas or Maxwell, whatever. He'll take wherever it's open. And – I mean, if you say that Sherman's going to shut down half the field, even better for Seattle's defense because then you just put him on an island and say, all right, don't worry about this yep. guy. Look at the rest of it. Now, I was talking to Molly earlier in the day, and uh, I was telling him, you know, the Super Bowl reminds me so much of that oakland Tampa Bay game where you got that high-powered offense going against uh, that uh, incredible defense. Now, yeah. in no way am I saying that Rich Gannon <laughs> is Peyton Manning, all right? That's not what I'm saying here. Just saying that, you know, if there's a defense that could mess around with Peyton Manning, this is definitely the one to do it. Uh, you know, both both sides of the ball have you know set. Well, that Tampa records. defense was historically Absolutely. pretty good too. Absolutely, Absolutely. but back at it. they had great players all over the ball. You know, you had Sapp, Simeon Rice, Derek Brooks, Hardy Nickerson, Rondé Barber, Lynch. You know, all these guys and Dexter even, Jackson. Dexter Jackson, who nobody who the hell even knows he is. He's a Super Bowl MVP. He's the uh, you know the beneficiary of all that. But you know. Seattle's secondary, I think, is that's where all their talent is. Uh, you know, not, they not, have, not, they not, have a good not, D line. Not though. to undermine the front seven at all. You know, they they can definitely play. But you know, each each of these guys in the secondary, you know, just an all pro at their position. Um, I I just I see that being the key matchup in the game. I think that any of anybody that you put in the Seattle secondary on any of these Broncos receivers. I don't want to say they're going to shut them down, but uh, they can, they damn can, near might do it. They can hold their own, I feel like. you know. I mean, come uh, on. You're playing Richard Sherman against two white guys. You know, whether it's Walker or Decker. Come on, he's going to shut him down. Let's be honest. <laughs> two white guys. Let's be honest. Well, like I said, I mean, I Sh- play Sherman's not going to be on did. anyone in particular, right? So, right. you know, they, they change their formations. Um, but, yeah, no, the key, right, at least talking about when Denver has the ball, uh, it, is how well the Denver, uh, how well the Seattle secondary could play. And, again, I, I keep going back to it, but – the, 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 what they have to do, they have to, you know, make Manning hold the ball, but then that D line has to do its job, or, or that front seven, yeah. you know, whoever you're bringing, they have to get to the quarterback, right? Because yeah. you can cut. I don't care how good you are as a secondary player, if you give all day to throw the ball, you can't cover you're find it. Somebody you, eventually. Right? Someone's gonna pop open. It's just that's what happens, right? I don't know how many so, times I heard this week. I'll pay man. He could have wear that jersey into the Super Bowl. He didn't get touched that many times, yeah. you know, in, in the New England. I mean, you yeah. heard everybody said it, you know, and not going to happen. This and week. it was true. And and Peyton, Peyton will throw the ball away. He'll he won't take the sack. He'll 
He'll throw it down to the ground. He'll throw it, you know, into the into the sideline. He'll he'll give up plays if he doesn't feel like he has something. Right. And it's making him give up those plays. Which is and fun, making right. Him, you know, making him throw the ball into the ground, making him throw the ball away. It's doing that and not getting caught up for those big, you know, lofty passes that he <laughs> that he lays in the baskets. <laughs> I don't even think it's that. I, I don't. I think it's you can't let him get into a rhythm. You know, he listen. They're gonna score. They're gonna score. But if he's in that kind of groove where he's he just finding over receivers all over the place, they're done. They're done. They have to make him uncomfortable. You know, they're gonna get those big plays. They're just too good not to. Yep. They're not gonna shut them out. Um, but th- they're gonna have to make him uncomfortable. If they if if Denver scores forty points, they're gonna win the game. Absolutely, oh, well. like, absolutely. Like that goes that goes without saying. Right. That Seattle offense can't can't hang with them offensively. Yep. Um. So I think the whole key is is how you know does that Denver uh, does that Seattle secondary give the front seven of Seattle enough time to go get Manning and not even sack him but make him uncomfortable and then are they making him uncomfortable I think that's what it comes down to if Peyton is moving his feet around holding the ball you know if he has the ball up bring it down moving him around I think that bodes well for for Seattle and but again Nips you know. They might do that the first couple of drives, and, and then, then Peyton comes up, back with the adjustments. You they know? start so. draw plays with Marina. No, I mean, it, it's yeah. going to be a chess match all game. But also, we haven't even mentioned it once yet, and we got to talk about it. The weather? The weather. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to bring it up. Damn, you mind reading, some bitch. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean that will play part two. I, mean, I guess if it's windy and shitty out, it's gonna it's not gonna play well for Peyton. If you look at the forecast right now, it's forty and clear skies. Right, that's that's what it's that's what the forecast is for right now. Well, hey, it, it seems so- like the football gods have shone on Peyton all year. That's, so it well, nice wasn't it important. supposed to be nice as hell today? And you know we're out there I'm freezing my ears off. Yeah, but here's the thing: the, it's not about the cold. The cold doesn't matter. No, it's about the wind. Absolutely, yeah. it's Absolutely. about the wind and the conditions. If it's cold, that does I don't think that matters one bit. You know. You know, as long, you know, as long as it's not ne- in the negatives, but even still, it's the wind, right? Because he he well, he obviously lost arm strength. He doesn't. He's right. not going to throw those frozen ropes, you know, yeah. twenty yards on an out. He, that's not what like he does a, a anymore. Dart. It's going to be yeah. It's, it's but, obviously going to affect his pass. Right, but if he goes to throw that seventeen yard pass and it gets caught up in a wind and you put some air under it, that's Seattle secondary. That's where they make plays, man. They're going to intercept the ball. They're going to take it the other way. They make yeah. plays when it ain't windy. Right. So, you know, I mean, listen, we know the lay of the land here. You know, it's always windy. It's windy here in September, October, November, December. You know, I, I think that that will come into uh, effect here in this game. Uh, you know, absolutely. That that ball goes up in the air. Seattle's going to get it, you know, whether it's windy, it's not. Um, I just think, you know, just being outside today, being outside all week, you know, like it, it's been cold, yes. But, you know, it, it's still that, that factor of wind that will be there. It'll always be there in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Right, but it, it, sometimes it's worse than other times. Yeah, it, 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 depending if it's bad enough to affect the game right. or to affect his throws. You know, and then that affects the whole game plan, too. If I mean, the, the, you've seen Manning before in games. I mean, you saw it in the Baltimore game last year where it looks like he couldn't complete a, game, a ball five yards down the field. Yep. You know, he played when he played in New England this year. It was freezing with high winds, and they put up 24 points in the first half, mostly of turnovers. Put up only seven. Oh yeah, in the that rest 24. Of the game. I think that was his uh, least least passing yardage least game of the season. Game, yeah, yeah. So you've seen it before that it, it obviously can affect him. I mean, obviously he's come out in other bad weather games like versus Tennessee, and he said, "Oh yeah, you know, screw everybody who says I can't play in bad weather." But obviously, like Molly said, he doesn't have the same arm strength that he had, and it's just. Can he make the throws that he needs to in those conditions? Well, how about we flip it? What, how about we take when Seattle has the ball? Um, what do they need to do? How, how does that Denver second there, uh, that Denver defense match up? I think all day they just run, 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 run right down their throat, you know, and then, then that's going to open up the pass game for them. Uh, so you well, think to be able to run it? Absolutely. But, I mean, absolutely. Denver, this... I mean, shut down a very good you know New England rushing offense that was just um they they just went up against. I think. Marshawn Lynch is better than any back that New England clearly, had. Clearly, I think their Seattle offensive line is better, and I, I think the big X factor is Percy Harvin coming back into the game. Ah. Can he make a big play or two? Can he uh, even on special teams? Can he stay in the game? I mean, it, what, right? It, you know, special teams to talk about. But. Doug Baldwin made you know a couple of huge catches. I mean, they got a bunch of no names really out there on the on the outsides really. Here. So, can Harvin you know, you know take a reverse? He's he's one of those versatile type of players that can make any kind of a run, a, a screen pass. He can. He can bust the big play. He's only got to stay healthy uh, for sixty minutes. Yeah, you know? I, but I, Brian Billick made a great point, something that you never think about, with, uh, in reference to Percy Harvin. So when when Seattle puts their their game plan in, right? How many he he go, he goes? You can't devote 
a, a huge chunk of your game plan to Percy Harvin because, really, you can't depend on him. What if he gets banged up and he goes out? Then you got to throw a third of your game plan away. Yeah. Yeah. So how many plays? Percy Harvin haven't played all year. So, the you know, if they're running those reverses or whatever those plays to Harvin, those are all fairly new. Like, how much new stuff do you want to roll to Super Bowl with? How much stuff do you want to devote towards Harvin that, you know, if he goes down, then that's all out the window. Because, obviously, there's no one like him. There's no one that's replacing him. If yeah. he goes down, that's all out of out the window. So, I thought Billick made a great point that, you know, will they have maybe, you know, a couple quick screens, a couple reverses? Yeah. But there can't be, you can't put too many wrinkles into that offense. Because right. if he does go down, then, you know, then that, yeah, he's somewhere. gone. And you don't have any, you know, that's a, that's plays that, that point. you didn't install all week. I think Pete Cow's a pretty intelligent guy. He knows the, the whole yeah. deal of Percy he Harvin this year. I don't think he's going to devote for any, I don't think he's going to devote well, a tenth of well, the game the plan point. to No, Harvin. well that's the point. You can't. So if you don't put these plays in, then you can't run them. You right. know what I mean? So how many if Percy Harvin's going to be X-Factor I don't, I don't take a guess there can't be more than three or four Percy Harvin plays. If that. Ah, uh, Well no. I would say, I mean and I don't know. That's all he needs, but I don't know to break one. But I don't know if it's as much as saying it's a Percy Harvin play. <laughs> but you putting him in the slot versus putting a Doug Baldwin or a, a Kearse in the slot, he he can make you know he can be a difference maker versus I don't know if those other guys on the outside are. Right. No, you know, I he can he can b- break a bigger play versus the other. I mean, Golden Tate's done it. You know, well, I mean, they had a couple. I mean, most of their offense versus San Fran was all big plays. Right. The like Russell and Wilson, yeah. improvising. The, the big Doug Baldwin play. Um, you know, running around, kind of, you know, buying time for everybody. And, you know, it, it's can they get those big plays? Because obviously, like we said, their offense isn't, you know, like the machine like Denver is. Like, they're not going to go hit you with a 12 play, 15 play, 10 pass. You know, if they're doing it, they're doing it on the ground. But if Denver can shut that down, their defense then they're playing the one machine. hit, one well, sided. Well, but if there is one, the weakest unit on that Denver team. Offense, defense is probably that secondary, especially now. You know now that all the injuries they've had. Yeah, uh, you know, so you know maybe you know Russell. Those don't they have to make a couple big plays in that pass game? You know they have to beat that Denver secondary. I'm sure Denver's going into it telling that secondary, don't give up the big play. You know, give up those underneath. We could deal with that. Make them put drives together. Um, you know, they they need to obviously stop the run. I'm sure that's their first and foremost, right? Yeah. And that front seven, I thought going into New England Denver game, I thought New England's gonna win because I thought the New England defense was gonna play better than the Denver defense, and I was yeah, completely was, wrong. Yeah. That Denver defense, especially that front seven, played very, very well. Yeah, Pot Rose, baby. Pot Rose, yeah. Pot Rose. Um it was either that or Shrimp Alfredo we said. <laughs> <laughs> they played very well. Um and that that uh Seattle offensive line has shown some leaks uh throughout the course of the year. Um but so I think Seattle needs uh, to run the ball, right? Control the clock. I think that's the uh, that's the thing to do, and then take advantage of that Denver and, secondary. And I think what Russell Wilson needs to do is too is also instead of extending plays, is go on the run too. If if he has an oh, alley yeah. or you know if he can do it, he it seems very anti to do that against both New Orleans and to make San the, Fran. The big play, make he the wanted big to make throw. the throw. He wanted to try to run around the back and like you know lose yards at the time. I think if he has an alley, if he can pick up a 10 yards, 15 yards here, he has to take every single Keep advantage and move, yeah. to move that ball forward. All right, final predictions for this game. Right now? We're calling the game right now? Go or on. do you want to wait? No, let's do the prop bets. We'll then hold we'll do it. it. All right, yeah. we're going to hold the it. Whole betting, the Ooh, whole betting. Ooh, we're teasing. The whole betting thing, right? We're let's, teasing let's, the crowd. It's the betting segment. Teasing the crowd, slightly caressing your inner thigh. All right, enough, <laughs> enough. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. All right, when we get back, we're going to lick go. a chickle. <laughs> cupping, cupping the balls. A gentle, <laughs> a gentle <laughs> little nibble rub. Blow on the neck. All right, when we get back, we're, we're going to be doing the process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't keep it straight. Fifteen minutes of fame. Let's go. 